morning and welcome to the Lady Chapel of St Nicholas Church here in Hornsey as we celebrate once more the joy of our salvation. We begin, if you have a candle ready, let's share together by being in the light of Christ as we light our own candles, signs of Christ's light in our lives. Our opening hymn this morning, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds in a Believer's Ear. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds, and drives away our fear. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast. Tis manna to the hungry soul and to the weary breast. Dear name, the rock on which I build my shield and hiding place, my never-failing treasury filled with boundless stores of grace. Jesus, my shepherd, brother, friend, my prophet, priest, and king, my Lord, my life, my way, my end, accept the praise I bring. Weak is the effort of my heart, and cold my warmest thought. But when I see thee as thou art, I'll praise thee as I ought. Till then I would thy love proclaim with every fleeting breath, and may the music of thy name refresh my soul in death. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We say the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, 
firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We pause to reflect on this week, those things we've said and done, or perhaps should have said and done. We say the second prayer of confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We praise our Heavenly Father, the God to whom we owe our very being, as we say together the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Hopefully you received your packages with the reading sheets in. If not, they're on their way. Our first reading is from the letter of St Paul to the Roman Church, chapter 7, beginning at verse 15. He writes, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law, that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. 
For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through our Lord, uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. It's fair to say that sometimes our lectionary readings are helpful when I come to prepare my sermon. There's an easy topic, but other times it's really difficult to discern what God wants to say to us through his words. And today, well, I think today is a gracious gospel that we all can hear and take notice of. For we find Jesus calling out the attitudes of people towards himself and John the Baptist. John was an ascetic, brought up to live a life of simplicity, prayer and fasting, to prepare him for his role as John the Baptizer. And many despised his message because of how he lived. Jesus, on the other hand, seems to have enjoyed a good feast. Remember all that wine at the wedding? and he spent time with disreputable people. And many despised his message because of the way he lived. This then is, I think, a sharp rebuke to Jesus' hearers. Stop behaving like children, he says, letting what you see on the outside affect what you think and believe. They didn't like the message, whoever delivered it. Some even confused the message with the messenger and refused to hear it because of their prejudices. And yet that seems to be human nature, doesn't it? And worse than that, the messenger is then despised because of the message they bring. The message of John and Jesus was the same. Turn away from how you've been living and return to faith in the God who loves you. It's the same good news we share today, 
And some will, sadly, have experienced the rejection that can follow telling our friends the message of Jesus. Being a messenger is a risky business. It always has been. And yet, it is our calling as Christians to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all people. And today we know there will be some people worshipping in person in their church buildings. Though to borrow a phrase from Star Trek, it's church gym, but not as we know it. The many regulations that are designed to keep everyone safe and help prevent the spread of the virus means that church will look and sound very different to what we're used to. No singing, no sharing the peace, though some will no doubt welcome that one, and no time either to catch up after, after over a coffee. For now these are necessary changes that we should welcome as it makes it possible for the church to gather in person to praise God and receive the sacraments once more. And some will say, it's about time too, let's get on with it. Others will look and say, oh, it's all too soon, it's far too dangerous. Criticism and praise in equal measure. Here in our benefice, that's we, we, the wardens, PCC and myself, have taken the decision not to open just yet. After all, the National Church Guidelines only came out on Wednesday, just four days ago. We feel we need more time to plan, more time to consider how to act in the best interests of our mostly older regular members, and for those who might like to start coming, perhaps for the first time. Cautious and careful are our watchwords. No doubt some will criticise, you're being too careful. If the pubs are open, why can't we? Others will praise us for taking the time to get it right. Criticism and praise in equal measure. So opening, opening could send a message that gathered worship is the most important aspect of our faith. It may reinforce the view of many that we Christians are only interested in what goes on in church. And we know that's not true, but it stings just the same. And waiting, well, that could send the message that we're scared, and perhaps we should be scared. Only time will tell. But it could, and I hope will in our case, send the message that we are concerned first and foremost for the welfare of all who may come. That while we long to gather for worship, because it really is important, we can wait a little longer. For the work of being church has carried on. In the phone calls, messages and texts, the shopping, the many other practical ways we've served one another, our friends and our neighbours. The work preparing the dying, burying the dead, and comforting the bereaved has continued. The work of praying with and for people in sorrow and in joy is ongoing. The work of helping to plan and rearrange weddings and baptisms, that never stops. Over the last few days, a number of toadstools have appeared on the vicarage lawn. The fruit of that hidden network under the turf that continues to grow and flourish unseen, until, that is, it's ready to emerge from the grass and declare itself. In a similar way, many church communities have still been active, working quietly perhaps in the background, but doing what they've always done. And when they, in the power of the Holy Spirit, discern that the time is right, they too will emerge back into view by opening again fully for public worship. So you may be pleased we haven't reopened yet, or you may be disappointed. But as subjects together in the glorious kingdom of God, 
We are free to disagree on this and many things, and yet we can continue to live together in the unity and love that brought us salvation in Christ Jesus. Our collect this morning asks that we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. That is, we shouldn't let the things of this world, the temporal world, our circumstances, our disagreements, and even the difficulties of this current time, none of these should cause us to lose our focus on Christ, who remains the hope of the world. In our Gospel passage we read, Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. My response to that on reading it was, Oh Lord God, we are weary. We are burdened with so many cares in these days. We are fearful and anxious, and we long to things to return to how they were. Alas, God doesn't promise things will return to how it was. But... Jesus offers to carry all those worries and fears in exchange for his yoke, the yoke of his authority over our lives. When we accept the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord and Saviour, then we are restored to a loving relationship with our Father who created us and cares for us, and a new unity with our sisters and brothers in the church on earth. Have you accepted Jesus' gentle and humble rule yet? Have you found rest for your soul? If so, then praise God and continue to share that good news with everyone, that some may come to know and love and praise God for themselves. If not, why not ask God to be present in your life today, to help you accept the truth that you are loved beyond measure? I can only be sure of two things today. The certainty that God is sovereign over all things and still offers rest for all who are weary and burdened. And secondly, that doing and being church will continue to look and feel very different for a long time to come, whether we like it or not. Amen. So let us declare together the faith of our church, the faith of our sisters and brothers down so many centuries, using the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This is the season of the year where priests and deacons are ordained and indeed next week or indeed this Thursday our own Archbishop will be appointed to his position. And so our prayers focus on all who lead us as priests and deacons, as bishops, as spiritual directors, those who offer pastoral care, all who serve in leadership roles in our churches. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in every age you raise up pastors and leaders for your church to reflect the light of Christ and to lead us in the way of holiness. We thank you for those who have been shepherds of your flock. Bless your church today with gifts of care and nurture. Give a pastoral heart to bishops, priests and deacons, and strengthen all who are called to be leaders of your people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for the gifts of grace in the lives of St Lawrence and St Nicholas. Give wisdom and insight to all in authority, in church and state that they may use their power for good and the benefit of those over whom they are sent. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those pastors and spiritual directors whose influence is hidden from the world. Bless them in their quiet guidance of those who seek after your holiness and truth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray especially today for all who were to be ordained priest or deacon in these past weeks. We pray a blessing on them as they wait to be ordained into your church as leaders of your people. We pray for them and their families, giving thanks that they are to be licensed to allow their work to begin in the parishes they are to serve. Bless them as they settle in and those whom they will serve. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray too for Bishop Stephen as he prepares to be licensed as our Archbishop. We thank you for him and his family. We thank you for calling him to come and serve among us. We pray you will pour out your spirit on him, that he may minister with discernment and wisdom for the whole province of the north, and as our Bishop of York also. Lord, hear us. We thank you for all who give pastoral care to the sick and the suffering. Bring, have mercy on those whose lives lack purpose or direction and bring them the care they need for wholeness and healing. We pause to pray for those whom we know need God's loving mercy this day.
We remember all who have asked for our prayers through sending messages and comments on Facebook and Messenger. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for all who have worked to lead others in the way of truth and are now at rest. For those who have been our mentors and guided us in the ways of holiness and truth. Grant us in this life the spiritual guidance and pastoral care that will lead us all to your eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, make us worthy of everlasting joy in the fellowship of all your saints, in the glory of your kingdom, where you live and reign, God for ever and ever. Amen. On this, the 72nd birthday of the NHS, we pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all who have the vision and determination to set up our National Health Service in the post-war era. We thank you for the millions who have benefited from free medical care in these past years. We thank you for all who are working this day, for those who have kept us safe and well throughout this crisis time. We pray for all, for the cleaners, for the nurses and doctors, for the specialists, for the administrators, those who work to procure the equipment needed, those who monitor the boilers and keep them running, those who keep the ground safe and beautiful for all. Bless all who work in our NHS, from the bottom up. Bless it, we pray, and may it receive the funding it needs to be a good and ongoing hope to all in need of physical healing. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come to share the peace today, I ask you all please to share the peace with love hearts and thumbs up. And I know there are some watching who we have no other contact with. Please, if you would, share the peace with us today because we'd love to know your names, that we may pray for you. I promise you I won't get in contact in any way, but just wish to know who is joining us in these times of worship. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As you continue to share the peace, I will remind everyone that we are grateful for all the gifts of money that you are still making to support the life and work of our church. As with many buildings, the costs continue whether we're using it or not, and we are very grateful for the generosity of many. If you need to find a new way or would like to give anew to the work here, then please get in touch. We have many ways to accept money from you. Through the bank, we can take even debit card payments now over the phone. But be blessed in all your generosity to our family here at St Nicholas and throughout our benefice. Our offertory hymn, Jesus Stand Among Us, Jesus, stand among us at the meeting of our lives. Be our sweet agreement at the meeting of our eyes. Oh, Jesus, we love you, 
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Eucharistic Prayer A because that enables me to sing the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From sunrise to sunset this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example, and obey his command. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, 
We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We pray the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. I invite you to make your own prayers of spiritual communion as I receive on behalf of us all, both gathered here online and indeed throughout all the parishes of our benefice. Let us pray. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest.
the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. That concludes our service this morning. Thank you all for joining. I do have one or two important notices, though please stay with us just a couple of minutes longer. We've already said the NHS is 72 today. Uh, please do remember, if you can, to come out at five this evening and uh, clap, a special clap, in celebration of the NHS's 72nd birthday. But we have an even more impressive birthday to celebrate today, as Marie Marriott Attic is 85 today. So many happy returns, Marie, to you. We hope you have a wonderful day celebrating with your friends and family. And there's another birthday, not quite as impressive as Mary's, to be fair. Our dear friend Chrissy celebrates her birthday this week. So many happy returns to you, Chrissy. And as we are celebrating, I have, I, you probably can't see this, which is sad, but this card has come all the way from Northern Ireland from our dear friend Reverend Mo. And she writes, Dear Tina and all at Hornsey Benefice, thank you, big letters, for the extremely generous Amazon gift voucher, which I have used to purchase various items for my new home. I have very fond memories of my time at your churches. Looking forward to getting back into taking services here in Northern Ireland. Wishing you all well. Many blessings and prayers from Reverend Mo. And I think Mark has taken photographs of our churches and turned them into what look like watercolours. All three churches are represented on this card. So it's a joy to hear from Reverend Mo. Those of you that have received your monthly packs will know that we have taken the decision not to open for the month of July. We will be in touch with the ambition of opening perhaps not all our churches to begin with, but with the ambition of having public worship of Holy Communion, either on a Sunday or in a weekday from August. Do please look out for those notices. And if you have any concerns, please get in touch. We're trying to make it as safe and as possible for everyone who wishes to come to come. But there will be many changes. I think that's quite enough for now. The wind is getting up, so it could be a bit of a blowy afternoon. Whatever you are doing for the rest of your day, go well and go with God, and let Jesus take those burdens from you now and every day. I'll be back live streaming with morning prayer at half past eight tomorrow morning. Until then, go well and go with God. Goodbye for now.